everybody welcome back to the channel where if you're anything and everything and today we are getting into another lego speed champion set this is set seven six nine two three the lamborghini lambo v12 vision from the gran turismo game or i should just simply say vision gran turismo as that's part of the name but <clears throat> essentially this is a concept car that was for the game but never really made in real life they made one version of it but other than that um it's it's not really like a production car it's not even like a specialized car where you made i don't know 20 of them or something like that it really was just made because of the game so then they made a real version of it has 230 pieces kind of on the lower end of the newer type of cars coming out which kind of start going to the high 200s near 300 range but um you can see here, I guess that's just what's needed for it. Maybe it didn't need that many, or maybe the pieces are bigger. It looks very nice, but it's definitely different. Unfortunately, I got kind of a beat up box, so I'm not happy with that. <clears throat> Let's rip into this and see how many bags we're working with. Now, one thing that's kind of funny is I actually thought that <clears throat> this was a uh, this was um, a different type of Lamborghini that wasn't like this just for the game, but like I think it's called a Cyan. Is it? I might be saying it wrong. I know I looked it up not long ago, and I have a Hot Wheels version, but then I looked it up and realized that it wasn't the same car. It wasn't the same Lamborghini. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so it's just two bags, so that's not bad. I don't know how fast the build would go in terms of building it, but it's just two bags. You have your booklet, and this is the sticker sheet. Now, most speed champions have a lot of stickers, but this... This is a lot of stickers. You can see already this thing sticker 27 on there. And the thing about it is occasionally too, you're gonna have some stickers that, I don't know if this does this, but where they're the same number. Okay, like for example, you see eight and eight over there. So technically in seven and seven. So technically there are more than 27 stickers on here because some of them are doubled. So that is a lot of stickers, but we are gonna get into this. Let me open up the packs. Build it together. We're going to pause the video, come back, and we're going to review this Lamborghini. All right, you guys, we're back with the finished build. And now, uh, so this is the, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is the completed version of the Lamborghini Lambo V12 Vision. Gran Turismo is the way it's called. And, um, you know, as I also mentioned in the beginning of the video, I actually thought that this was, when I first saw it at a glance, the Lamborghini, I want to say it's called a Cyan. I might be saying that <clears throat> incorrectly because I don't have it in front of me right now. But, um, and then come to find out afterwards that it's not. Uh, so, you know, that's what originally made me kind of interested in, in purchasing it. Now, it's it's interesting because it's really just like a concept car. And even though there is one that's been, been built in real life, um, it really, there is no other one. It's not like a production car or anything of that sort. But it's definitely an interesting build as far as the Lego uh, aspect of it goes. So just kind of really first covering the car aspect of it. Some people might, might not find it fascinating to know that it's, you know, kind of not a real car. It is in the sense that they built a physical one just to be able to say like, yeah, it is a real car and they can show it off. But it's not a real car in the sense like it's not something that you can purchase or that you can buy. Um, you know, so that's one aspect about it in terms of that. We'll get into this in a moment because some aspects about this is very like all over the place and loose and very adjustable. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's, um, it's not a car. Like I said, that is, is it's technically considered real, but then at the same time too, they've made it real. Uh, on the other side of, of it, if you just want something that looks nice, it's like a concept car just to kind of have in your collection. It's cool, especially if you have it for play reasons in terms of like, and I don't mean like play in terms of you just riding around, but say if you want to build a Lego city, you want to say, okay, like 
you know, I have a guy who owns a bunch of cars in my Lego city and he owns this Lamborghini. But in that aspect, it just looks nice in that regards because there are, have been other, um, you know, fancy sports cars, supercars, uh, you know, Lamborghinis even that are super outrageous. I forget the name of that one that only has like a single seater in the middle. Um, but there is one that's like that. So it kind of falls within that realm of something that Lamborghini has done before that are, I'm not going to say production cars, but are cars that have more than say just one that are made and that you can purchase. <clears throat> now, as far as the the build goes, I'll get to the minifigure and all that extra stuff in a minute. Those are the extra parts. I just kind of left them out for you guys to see. Uh, there's not a lot. But now, um, so the build on this was actually super easy. Now, it only has 230 parts, and that's for the concept of this, it's kind of fine because when you think about it, if this is a non production car and it's a car just for, you know, um, the way it looks and, 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 and just, it's not going to have all the basics that you would have in a normal car anyway. Then the idea of it being a car, at least in Lego terms, that doesn't have a lot of parts makes sense because, um, you know, it it's a car that you're not going to have two seats. Uh, you know, you're not going to have all this like additional framing and, 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 you know, body design on it. It's very slender. It's, it, it doesn't even use the uh, the basic chassis. We're going to get into that in a moment. But essentially, it's 230 pieces. So in that aspect, in terms of the price to piece value, you might feel like you're kind of getting gypped. But at the end of the day, you still are getting a complete car that, you know, looks nice and is really cool. And um, <clears throat> it is because of that lower count, pound, ah, sorry, tongue twister, lower piece count. It only has two bags, as I showed in the beginning of the video, and it was a very easy build. Now, it has a lot of stickers. It has a lot of stickers. And most of these Speed Champions ones have a lot of stickers in general, but this one has a lot of stickers. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video as well, um, when you're counting them up, there's actually more than the number that you see on the sticker sheet because some of them are double numbered. Um, so you have probably some upwards of like 30 stickers. But it actually is pretty easy because you, not easy, but you get to the stickers right away. It's not like a thing where you're like, when am I going to get to them? The build is so fast that you, like almost every page, you're putting down a sticker. And for some reason, it didn't feel that tedious to me because it felt like you were addressing them immediately. And it wasn't like, well, when is this coming up? Almost every time you flip the page, you were putting on a sticker. But with just two bags, it's such a small piece count that it went very quick and very simple. Uh, it really wasn't hard at all. Now, let's take a look at the back of the box to get a sense of what the actual car looks like. So that's what the actual car looks like. Um, I don't have any other kind of photos on it. Usually on these Speed Champion boxes, they'll put like one photo. And as far as the rear goes, they use this design to come up with the exhaust right here. Um, these looks like those kind of like gauntlets that were in the Black Panther set. You got these little axe hatchets on the side and then these flat pieces here that are like flag pieces. The problem, I would say, with this whole design here, let me get my, adjust my lighting a little bit, is that it doesn't look bad at all, but the problem is that you have to angle it where you want it to be, and I think the correct angle is something like that. So that's going to move a lot, and I think that's the one thing that is kind of will be annoying about this car is that it's really one of those things that's meant to like sit still and, and be um, displayed and not for you to kind of move around much. This whole piece right here is movable as well. Let's see. These, these things move like that. So you want them to kind of fall in place here um, and everything. So you, it, it's, everything is very, um, it's the pieces, the way they connect, they aren't really connecting. So in, in certain areas, so it's, it's an aspect of it that, you know, you really want to display it, but you don't necessarily want to, um, you know, be like moving it around a whole bunch because then things will come out of place and it may not look right. Now, one thing that's interesting, as I mentioned earlier in the video, um, there's no chassis on this pre-assembled chassis like on the other ones. So um, 
I apologize also for the depth of field from this angle here. Sometimes uh, the focusing might seem a little off. But the, the undercarriage here, you build this up. So let me show you guys really quickly in the instructions, and you'll get a quick sense of what I'm talking about. So that's the beginning of the undercarriage, the front part of it. This becomes the center part. Let me move the car back a little bit. Let's see here. Once you start seeing like that, the main foundation of it. So you can see here, like that's generally the main foundation of the base of the um the frame. So you build the frame up. And the reason why that's important in this model is because it's the way you get it to be extremely low. Because if you had your traditional frame, I'm not sure if it would be able to be that low. This right here is able to be very low um, as far as the way it sits on the ground. And it's funny because the actual car, if you go and look at, if you YouTube a video of the actual car, you will see that it's so low to the ground that even them taking at it out of the um, the trailer truck, is super hard and super difficult because they got to take their time because they don't want to scrape the bottom. So this is a very low profile car. So I thought that was interesting that they went about it that way rather than using a pre-assembled frame like they do on most of the cars. Um, but it's very nice. Like overall, it's very nice. Just understand that, you know, this is definitely like a concept car and that's what you get in your collection. But the details on it look really nice for all the angles it has and everything like that. It's just a lot going on. As far as when you open up the the I guess the sit sitting area we'll call it for lack of a better word. I don't want to call it a cockpit. It almost feels like you're looking at a spaceship. But you opens up like that for you to get the person in. Um see once again, just me touching this on the back, I accidentally moved this. So that's why I say it's you know, that's something that you have to be aware of. They didn't go too heavy into the detail of the interior here. Um you know, because of the way it's designed to so have the handlebars as the steering wheel. And then, you know, just they could sit, the person could sit down in there. You would just kind of put them down. And the, the, the holes that would be on the bottom, on the, their bottom area would go there for the rear holes of the leg, the upper ones there. Um, and that would be really the main thing that's holding them in place. So it's a little different than your conventional one. Now, obviously, you could see through the bottom, but that was just, you know, like I said, just to create that, this design. And you had to create the um, frame, you know, by, by pieces, build it up. So it's definitely different in that aspect. So, you know, but overall, for what you were able to achieve with this, I think it's really nice. It's done really well. Here was all the extra pieces you see over here. I'm not going to specifically bring them into frame. Obviously, you have your little helmet as well. And this is the um, driver. Now, what's interesting, they have two different types of faces, two different facial expressions is I think I had mentioned at the beginning of the video, but I'm not really too sure if I did. Uh, there is a YouTuber, and I forget the person's name at the moment. <clears throat> is it Blondie something? I, I forget what it is, so I don't want to misquote it. But some people have referenced, I've seen a video of, so people have referenced that this person is that YouTuber because she had got like one of the only people who was exclusive to be able to um, see the car. And uh, I think I can't remember if she sat in it or not, but the point was she was able to do like a a review of the actual car. And being that there's only one of those inside the world, you know, you got to have, you know, exclusive rights to be able to do that or exclusive, exclusive privileges to do that. And so some people say that this character, this Lego character was modeled off of her, which is potentially possible. And if it's not, it definitely is a super coincidence because it's a blonde lady who looks just like this. So that's something right there. But other than that, I think it's a nice um, nice set. I think it's definitely worth purchasing if you are into that, or you want something that's like over the top. Uh, if you are a fan of cars that really are main are, are main production car, then obviously this one's not going to be for you because it's not a main production car. It really is just a car from a video game. And like I said, if it wasn't for the fact that they built the one real model, this would be exclusively a fake car them building the real model makes it real in the world. And I think that that actually gives it a lot of brownie points because you can say, this is a real car. It's not just a made up car. It's not a fictional car. It's a real car because they actually did that. I do not know though, if the actual car, its performance is equal to 
the performance in the game. I, I don't know the game. I never played the game. I mean, I know of Gran Turismo, but I never played the game. But my point is, is that I don't know if that's just caught. They designed the car just so you could physically say, here is what it looks like. But the engine underneath and all the components are not going to get you up to the speeds that it's really supposed to be promoting, um, meaning that it's just a shell for the most part. Or is it really a, um, you know, designed after the car in the game in terms of is this super hyper performance, super car, hyper car type of thing that I do not know. And like I said, if you're the kind of person who just wants to collect cars that you feel are in production, then this might not be for you. With that being said, you guys, as always, like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.